Hello and welcome to Let's Invest. Right after we hit the subscribe button, we're going to be doing a side by side by side by side by side comparison of the balance sheets of the five largest cannabis producing companies in Canada. The reason we're doing this today is because as you guys know, there was a certain illness which shall not be named on YouTube that has pretty much destroyed international markets around the world. And on top of that, over the past uh, year and a half or so, the bubble in the cannabis industry has completely popped and almost every cannabis company is trading at a tenth or a fifth or a fraction of the valuation they were in 2018. Therefore, because of this double whammy to the cannabis industry, I think it might be a good time to start looking at cannabis stocks because they could possibly be undervalued. With that said, I am not a certified financial planner. I don't, this is not financial advice. This is just for entertainment and you should not base your trading decisions or investing decisions off of what I say today. It's completely up to you to take your own risk in the stock market. So with that said, let's talk about a brief overview of what these companies are, some of my concerns with them, and then we're gonna get into the comparison. So basically, Aurora Cannabis, um, one of the best known names in the cannabis industry, uh, especially amongst um, investors, but there's a huge concern right now that they might be running low on cash and have too many expenses and too many liabilities and might not make it through this downturn. Um, they might go bankrupt or get bought out. On top of that, they've been shutting down some facilities, laying off some workers. Um, their, their founder just sold two thirds of his position in the company and a lot of other bad news like that. Okay, Afria. Oh, Afria, not too much drama around Afria, except for in 2018, summer 2018, um, management bought a bunch of assets at in South America at high prices. And a lot of investors think that that was some kind of scheme to funnel money out of the company and into the CEO and some board members pockets. All of the CEO and board members that were implicated in that scandal, although there were no like charges or lawsuits or anything that came to fruition of my, from my knowledge anyway, once again, not financial advice. I don't even know if I have all my facts right about some of these things, but anyway, um, basically it all just kind of blew over. Um, the CEO and board members have been replaced with independent parties that were not involved with that. And a couple of the companies that, that were involved with that have now been completely disassociated with Afria and they've kind of started anew, but in a very quiet way. Um, but anyway, Moving on to CGC. So CGC, the biggest, this is a canopy growth, the biggest company, um, I think cannabis company in the world. Uh, Bruce Linton was their CEO recently. He got fired by the board of directors because he was wasting money. The biggest uh, thing everyone knows about CGC is that they have a partnership with Constellation Brands. Constellation is a um, alcohol producer and distributor of Modelo and Corona. Uh, now that I said that word, I'm probably going to get demonetized, but whatever. And that's why everyone knows CGC and why everyone loves them. Because they've got a lot of cash from that partnership and because they have that partnership um, strength. Um, Kronos. So Kronos is big because they have a partnership with Afria, the uh, tobacco company in North America that sells Marlboro cigarettes. Copenhagen, Skoll um, has a 35% stake in Juul basically a huge company in the vice industry. That's why everyone likes Kronos or knows Kronos his name and why they have a 2 billion market capitalization. Tilray. Tilray was the first company in the, um, on the NASDAQ anyway, cannabis company on the NASDAQ. And I think just today they got sued by their investors in a class action lawsuit for some kind of misrepresentations or misleading statements. And oh yeah, one more thing to say about Kronos is uh, recently they delayed the public the publishing of their financial statements because of some possible fraud um, and they don't want to recognize revenue from some transactions because it might implicate them in that. So every one of these companies is having has some problems, has some turmoil, um, but it's 
my goal by the end of the next few months to figure out which one to invest in uh, for myself or which couple I should invest in. So let's look at the freaking statements now, shall we? Anyway, so as we can see, the first thing we should probably look at is that um, the market capitalizations here are all in US dollars. Afria and uh, Aurora Cannabis and Afria, about the same, um, around a billion dollars. Canopy growth, enormous, bigger than all the rest combined, almost $5 billion. Kronos, two billion, and Tilray, about half a billion. So keep those numbers in mind when we go through these uh, statements. So the first thing we should look at is their cash positions, because right now we're in a recession and cash really matters. Um, so first thing, Aurora, they have $182 million in cash, which is significantly less than the rest of these. And it's, and it's significant because they have more current liabilities than they do have cash. Um, looking over here, we have half a billion at Afria, uh, a huge amount, two billion at can uh, Canopy, two billion at Kronos, and a hundred million at Tilray. So those cash amounts matter because a lot of because these companies are going to have to rely on some of their cash to help them pay off their short-term liabilities. These are uh, liabilities that are going to be due for payment within the next 12 months. So as you can see, uh, Aurora, there is less current asset or well, less cash than current liabilities, which is a concern. Afria, you know, they're pretty much good to go for the next multiple years, it looks like, on cash. Uh, they even have some set aside for possible acquisitions, which would be nice during this time of low valuations. CGC, way too much cash, <laughs> way more than they need. Kronos, way more than they need. Tilray, uh, it's getting borderline there. But all these companies also have current assets, which, which can be liquidated pretty fast to cover these current liabilities. However, a lot of these companies have high inventories and high biological assets. Inventories that's like processed um, cannabis or derivative products like beverages or uh, oils or extracts and biological asset assets is like the plants that are growing in their greenhouses. Uh, right now, there's kind of a glut in the supply of Canadian market. Therefore, I wouldn't take inventory or biological assets into account when trying to determine their current assets because quite frankly, there's way too much supply. These companies are still producing more than enough cannabis and they, and they often have like multiple years worth of inventory right now that is just not moving and getting old and possibly getting moldy and might have to get thrown away. So I look at their cash positions when I'm determining um, if they can cover their next year's, uh, their, this current year's liabilities. In which case, the only two that seem in severe danger are Aurora and Tilray. Um, okay, moving on down to the second half of the balance sheet. Let's talk about long-term assets. So you can kind of get a good idea of how big, let's scroll up so we can see the tickers actually, so we know what we're talking about. Yeah, so you can kind of get an idea of how much um, facilities these places own. Aurora Cannabis um, has a billion dollars in supposedly hard assets. Uh, Canopy has a lot of growth facilities as well. And like I said, with the inventory situation, maybe having all of these facilities isn't that good of an idea right now because you have all these greenhouses that are just going to sit empty or be pro or even worse produce extra cannabis that you cannot get rid of so with that said you got to take this into into account maybe maybe afria has a reasonable amount i don't really know i don't have square footage up right now but i will be doing a video on that in the future but you can kind of get an idea of the valuation of their facilities even more important than that, we have goodwill. So goodwill is the difference between um, what a company acquired an asset for versus what its fair value is. In current market situations, having a high amount of goodwill is not good at all because you probably bought those assets. In fact, I know you bought the I know you bought those assets back in 2018 when they were priced ridiculously. And Aurora Cannabis just took a nearly $1 billion um, loss by writing off some of their goodwill because their 
uh, a, some of their acquisitions just simply are not the same value that they used to be. The higher the goodwill is right now, the uh, more of a sign that the company's leadership made poor acquisition decisions in the past. As you can see here, that's most prominent with ACB, and that might actually lead to their ultimate downfall. They just blew all their cash during all the hype, uh, like a noob investor, <laughs> and now they're paying the price for it. Uh, Afria, they have a decent amount of goodwill compared to the rest, but um, they pretty much claim that it's all fair value, although, like I said, with the situation where they paid $130 million for like five acres in Jamaica um, and a license. If, if you see the video of the facility they bought, you very well, you very much question the actual worth of the facilities. But uh, basically all these companies are deeply in the red on, are deeply, uh, I guess in the red in the future, probably on goodwill, especially uh, Aurora Cannabis and CGC. Now, when these are going to have to be ultimately written off, they're not going to be cash write-offs, so they're not going to actually really affect the company's cash positions or like solvency or anything, but they just are going to look really bad in their financial statements and just prove um, how wild asset valuations back then for cannabis, for cannabis assets were. The same goodwill logic um, that it's basically worthless also applies to intangible assets, in my opinion, in the cannabis industry. Intangible assets are things like patents and um, trade secrets and things like that that they have acquired from those acquisitions. And quite frankly, with cannabis, you have plant extracts, chemicals, and devices like vape pens and things like that. And really, in my opinion, those are you could, have, you could have a million patents and still only have a billionth of the market share of the cannabis industry. It's easy to make knockoff vape pens or change something a little bit. Um, I don't think you can really patent CBD. I don't think you can patent THC. You can patent your strain, but it's so similar to other strains, someone else can just grow one that's slightly different DNA. So really, these two things are not assets in my opinion. So keeping that in mind, let's look at the total assets of the company and compare it to the total market cap of the company. So right now, I would say adjusted, Aurora probably has about a million and a half in assets. And yeah, just take that for what it's worth. Um, Afria probably has about, well, let's see, about a million and a half in assets as well. Let's see about Canopy Growth. Canopy probably has the best at about, let's do some quick math in our heads, five and a half million in assets. Um, and then just keep, go keep on going. Really, that's not super important, but what is super important is their cash positions versus their current liabilities. So let's go back down to their current liabilities, even though I've already covered it a little bit, and just see which ones are the, have the most uh, margin of, comfort essentially and which ones have the uh, most dire cash crunch right now. So Aurora, um, get rid of everything, <laughs> get rid of everything here because they're going to have, they already have a high return rate. So, and they already have a high inventory and they're already having uh, decreased sales, even though I haven't really covered that yet, but get rid of everything here and just look at their cash. They don't have quite enough to cover their current liabilities, meaning they're going to sell shares or get more debt. Not good. Afria, plenty of cash, low current liabilities. That's amazing. CGC, don't even have to say it. They got a ton of cash. Same thing with Kronos, tons of cash, but also pretty high other current liabilities when you compare actually the size of their company in total to the rest. Um, Tilray. Not a lot of cash, but not a lot of current liabilities, just enough to cover their their liabilities for one year. So the strongest, once again, are Afria, CGC, and Kronos. All right, moving on down to the uh, long-term liabilities and equity portion. Um, not a lot here, just kind of compare their total assets um, 
their total kind of adjusted assets. So just say two billion. Yep, it's higher than liabilities. Yep, higher than liabilities. Much higher, much higher. And then probably about equal for tilt raise. So what we're seeing is a general trend that CGC and Kronos, essentially what this balance sheet is telling me is that CGC's partnership with Constellation and Kronos with Afria has just given them an enormous leg up on the competition in terms of cash position and maybe distribution in the future, um, speculation there uh, with good consumer packaged goods and whatnot. And Afria has just kind of done it all organically. To my knowledge, they don't have a major partnership like Constellation or Afria to give them cash. Um, and if it wasn't for that one scam in the, in the past, which has basically been taken care of by now, um, in my opinion, <laughs> once again, they've, they've done pretty well organically. They've been pretty financially responsible. And as you can see down here, they're the only company that has actual retained earnings that are positive, meaning they've had enough net income maybe <laughs> and assuming because all of these balance sheets are unaudited by the way um they've had enough net income to be responsible and actually get some retained earnings that they can invest deeper into their company more than just relying on selling more shares or getting more debt to finance their operations amazing now i know you said what about i know you're saying what about chronos over here well Kronos has some uh, weird things going on with their um, balance sheet in that they are um, treating, what is it, some kind of derivatives from their deal with, like the, a change in the value of their deal with Afria. And they're calling that net income even though their net income is negative in reality. So this is, don't listen to Kronos. Their balance sheet and all kinds of financial statements are just jacked up in my opinion, and you'll see that in my next episode, which goes over the income statement. So basically the takeaways here are, if you want a company that has decently responsible management, judging by the balance sheet, go with Afria. If you're looking for a major gamble, hoping for an awesome turnaround with, with a penny stock now, go with Aurora Cannabis, maybe. <laughs> If you're looking for companies that are going to weather the storm and have multiple years to fight out this, um, to fight off this uh, downturn and lack of hype, CGC and Kronos, assuming they don't just blow more of their money faster than they already have, um, they might be some good options for acquisitions. Heck, I mean, they probably have enough. Look, two million cash. Aurora's evaluation or valuation, less than two million. Hmm. If they wanted to, they could probably. They could probably just buy Aurora out and then table all their stuff, you know, <laughs> throw it away, burn it to the ground, just get rid of Aurora, but probably not necessary because Aurora is going to do that to themselves. So responsible looking, rich with cash, bad operations, bad operations. That's what this balance sheet is telling me. If it's telling you something different, if I left something out, if I got facts wrong, please, after you hit the subscribe button. Please let me know in the comments below and I will make it a, in a, a correction in my next video. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this side by side by side by side comparison um, was helpful, helpful to you. Once again, not investment advice. Make your own decisions. Have a good day.